welcome to the glass working shop. So, let's get the first of the little rods, the pre-made little rods. Flip over into rotation, into positioning mode, I should say. Give my little rod a little bit of gentle preheat in the outer flame. Definitely don't want these guys exploding at this point. Check my length. The heat shield is preventing damage to the Inquala. As the spill from the torch is pointed right at it. of this guy in place. Now, one thing I learned, I can't violently snap off the end of the rod. That's probably close enough at the moment. Actually, it's probably not. I actually had a failure when I tried doing that, snapping off the end of the rod because it shocked the assembly. Careful. is just barely tagged in place. So I want to give it the, the best possible chance of survival. Put it over the Bunsen. Hopefully keep it hot and happy. Grab my next little rod. Preheat a bit. Far flame. My pulling technique is improving as I do these. These are probably the most uniform that I've made. Not perfect, but
the auxiliary heat shield, I currently classify it as a experimental prototype. Customers have asked, when will it be available? And my answer is, real soon now. I'm still continuing to work on it, make sure that it's right. I'm rotating a little bit, got to, in a long assembly like this, I really, really, really want to be very careful about not letting things get too cold. Because they will. They will get cold, they will crack. Resulting in pain and failure which is definitely my two least favorite things. Gotta keep them oil happy. Okay. Back on Mr. Bunsen. Another rod. They've been preheated in the kiln giving them a little bit of bonus heat here. After the first time I tried this, nipping off the end, I realized that, shocking glass is not a good thing to do, either thermally or mechanically.
rotation mode on the Bunsen. Rinse and repeat. Reheating this rod a little bit. Get into position. Switch torches. Get into rotation, I mean into positioning mode where in positioning mode every time I push the foot pedal, it rotates a little bit, release the foot pedal and it stops rotating. Particularly useful for assembly, which also relates to how I describe the Inqualo when I'm telling people about it, that the, the kind of the first impression that people get the first time they see it is, oh, it's a single-sided lathe. Well, yes, it is, but I describe it as a work-holding device that also rotates because many of the uses for it really do involve holding a workpiece when you're not doing, when you're not using single-sided lathe technique. For holding a workpiece during assembly, holding a workpiece when you're busy doing something else, keeping the piece hot under the Bunsen, and of course, single-sided lathe. It's a fine single-sided lathe. Nothing at all wrong with it, but it's so much more. So, back on the Bunsen. piece. Very happy with how uniform these little rods came out. I think I'm getting better at pulling to size. For those that don't know, the easiest thing to do in glass is to pull to a hair to pull to a really, 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 really small size. Anybody can do it. You can do it the first time you ever get near a torch. Pulling to a measured size is a different problem entirely. Especially trying to pull an almost right larger diameter just a little bit to get it perfect. so good. No failure yet. Hopefully there won't be any 
any time in the process, but glass has an attitude. Even the experts fail. Undoubtedly one of the most difficult art forms Okay, last rod. Getting a bit of drift here, so that is something that all Inquali users or potential Inquali users need to keep in mind that if you rotate for a long time, you're going to get some drift, and there are many strategies to, to deal with it. You can use lock collars, you can do what I just did, which is stop and reposition. You can reverse direction. Uh-oh. That's what I get for talking and not paying attention to my work. Could be trouble. I believe that I have averted disaster. working is a really, really, really hard thing to do, and then I go and make it harder by trying to do a one-man video production with improvised narration. Okay, expert glass workers, if you're watching, you can stop laughing. Bunsen off. Now, Got to be very careful with the squeezer. It's had a long time to cool down, but if I wanted to change dies right in the middle of work, when the dies were still hot, it's always a really wise idea to think about it for a moment and think, 
Can I safely touch that? Am I going to get in trouble? Am I going to get burned? And I think, I'm guessing here, I want to use the fixed size dies because I don't want any of the twist introduced by the iris dies. And so I'm kind of guessing a little bit about don't need the, the auxiliary heat shield anymore. Kind of guessing a little bit about the size I'm going to be needing. And of course, at this moment, the piece is about the most unstable it's going to be. I need to get very serious about the first squeeze as soon as it's ready. Because after it starts getting tagged and consolidated, it'll be a lot more, a lot less scary, I should say. The danger, of course, in this, I've got these protruding pieces that are very, very easy to overheat. The core is cold. There's no movement in the core at all. The core is solid. And part of the trick of the balance of this operation if I just get the outer rods hot without getting the core hot and squeeze, I won't get the pattern I'm looking for. So it's a kind of a, a kind of a somewhat between guess and intuition. And speaking of guesses, that was the wrong guess. Not correct. Which, of course, is a good time to illustrate why the Inquala is such a useful tool. Sometimes things don't go well in the glassworking shop. Sometimes you can't find a tool, you can't find a rod. Something else goes wrong. And it's nice to be able to just hand it off to the assistant and say, hey, keep it warm while I work. And Once again, slowly, carefully, being very aware of boiling the surface, degrading the surface, concentrating on the ends. Very, very, very gentle first squeeze. Just kind of touching it. Because the purpose of the first squeeze 
is just to ensure that everything is tagged in place in order for this pattern to emerge I have to have a bit of core heat too because I'm not just squishing these rods I'm actually trying to get the pattern trying to get the core to extrude up into the space in between the rods so of course every time I touch the outside with the squeezer dies it sucks heat out of the outside but maintains the core heat the alignment of this is pretty tricky because I need to manually align it within the squeezer dies to get the geometry I'm looking for to get these rods that I've just attached get them centered on the face of the hexagon and so I kind of take it a little easy when I put it in the squeezer to make sure that it's all lined up on all six sides it doesn't affect the core heat at all it's losing heat from the outside which might actually be a good thing since the whole purpose of this operation is to squeeze the rods into the core I'm gonna get that end happy pay attention to the ends standing on it now standing on it for a fairly long time knowing that the outside freezes pretty much as soon as it hits the the graphite but the inner core retains its heat looks like everything is working correctly I see evidence that the core has extruded as as planned into the space between the outer rods Turn up the flame a little bit. Starting to get a tiny bit of droopage. Which is a pretty good I indication that the core is starting to soften. Kind of little bench top little torch top marver action
Yeah. I think we have a hexagon. I was applying a little bit of downward force while squeezing because the moil end was a little bit smaller than I liked it and I wanted to get it to fill out the the hexagon a little bit better. do the same to the far end the ends are always a problem have I said that enough Probably say it two or three or four or five or ten times per video. The ends are always the problem. Did I mention the ends are always the problem? But every one of these that I do gets a little better. A little better, a little bit more under control. Surface is looking good. I see a tiny, tiny amount of evidence of bubbling, boiling degradation, but hey, that's just the way it goes sometimes. something real quick here. Let the assistant take over for a moment. Okay. Back to work. One of the nicest things about the Inquala, you can go do something else for a moment. Now, the pattern is pretty much made. I'm just in the final stages of refining the surface. It's almost smooth. It's almost melted in. It's almost uniform. Starting to think about building core heat in preparation for the pull. And no, there's not going to be very much pull at all. This will end up being the final size of this thing will end up being not a whole lot smaller than it is right now. I see a little bit of droop indicating that the core is well on its way. Standing on the squeezer, freezing the outside layers, compacting and consolidating the core, 
hopefully by now there's no air remaining because it's pretty much all sealed up. Air is my nemesis. Almost all of my marini have trapped air. Some of it is only visible under the microscope. It usually never ruins the piece. The pieces all come out looking pretty nice, but always a problem when doing this kind of work. Trapped air comes from three places, probably even more than three, but the obvious one is when doing cold assembly there's gaps and if the gaps don't get filled it's trapped air. Also, if the glass boils, degrades, outgasses, starts breaking down, it'll emit gases that look like air, but they're, they're just gas bubbles. And then some color rods have air in them, in particular Star White, part of the manufacturing process. So I'm standing on the squeezer and as I've said before in my squeezer videos, the squeezer is designed to take it. The squeezer is built with heavy duty components, roller chain linear bearings, and I can stand on it with my full weight. So that That, drooping a little bit, that's a nice hexagon. Boy, oh boy, I tell you, I tell you and I'll tell you again. oil end happy. Go over here and grab my pre-made large diameter puller out of the kiln and prepare for the pull. And I'm thinking I may not, this isn't that big, so I'm probably not going to put on my full heat resistant rig, but the, uh, the shield helps a little bit. And I've got the, the chrome jacket and the welding gloves at the ready. just in case they need to be pressed into service. Once again, I'm getting the workpiece moderately hot and the puller rod ripping hot. And with that, preparation for the pull is underway. I think I got a nice solid weld. I am not going to attempt to pull on the Inquala. I'm going to get a little heat into the piece and then switch to handwork. This piece is particularly critical 
because it's a hexagon. I don't want twist. So synchronizing hands is hard enough on a lightweight piece. As the piece gets heavier, it gets more difficult to synchronize the two hands. I'm not pulling much. Starting from the side I care less about, left hand side, the side on which it was built, is going to be the lesser quality side. Right hand side is a lot nicer. Wow. just be. One of the best ones ever. Looking good. No twist. Pretty straight. Pretty uniform. Boogered the end a little, but who cares? The end is never any good anyway. So that is, I think I can call that a reasonably good success. Is it perfect? No, nothing I've ever done is perfect. Is it the best yet? Probably. So, reuse this moil. That does it for today's glasswork. Thank you for watching. It's been fun.